And so today I want to talk about psychological tension and how we have competing structures. It's going to be a really good session. I've got my little prop here. So uh, yeah, that's right. Julie says, you don't have to be abundant. Uh, you don't have to, be, to have money to be abundant. That's absolutely true. And so what I did is I carried on with them and I said, look, let's notice all the things you have more than enough of because abundance is just having more than enough. So I want you to look and notice you have more than enough air to breathe and you have more than enough thoughts that you think and you have more, more than enough Facebook friends, you have more than enough this. What do you have in abundance to get into that? You can have that now. It's not the money that's going to give you that. It's not, nothing to do with that. And that doesn't equal that. And it's, it's uh, the reason why I bring it up is I feel that we get caught in these structures or these patterns or these things. That's right. But, but it's not even enjoying the money more. Um, may or may or feeling abundant, you relax, enjoy the money more. It's just a relax and enjoy now more and then make choices that create money to make choices that create money. See, oh, I want to pull these apart. It's an important thing today is I want to pull these apart. There are things that you do that create outcomes and then they're feelings and they're just different. They're just different. I want you to get, can everyone just get that? There's things that you do that create outcomes and, and those are choices and those are great. And then there's feelings and other things. And they're just, they're just different. You know, somebody who can't enjoy the moment and just enjoy life now, doesn't matter how much more money they get, they're not going to enjoy it, you see. And so they miss it. But then, uh, yeah, it's such a good conversation, mate. It's so important. It's like we, we just choose the feelings but I can be completely abundant and broke. You see, who, who's, who knows that's true. I could be completely abundant. I could feel so much love and joy. In fact, I, I hang out with people like that all the time, right? They just haven't done things that create money. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how abundant you feel about the forest you're growing. If you don't plant the seed and fertilize the seed and do it, you're not going to create a forest. There's an action that needs to be taken. But what's happened is we've confused the action. We've confused the action with the feeling. We say these are joined. You know, and we've said, and then there's belief structures and morphogenic fields and all sorts of things that happen around this, the, this joining, this joining of these things. And it's just not true. It's just not true. You can be completely unhappy and have lots of money. In fact, I know tons of people who are completely unhappy and have lots of money. Uh, I know people that are completely happy and have no money. And so the key is it's your emotion. I want you to get this. It's your end result. Because I can feel the confusion, right? It's your emotion of your end result. If you've got a structure that having lots of money is going to be abundant, that's the emotion you need to get into. If that's the outcome you want to create, does this make sense? It's your emotion. There's no specific rule of how and what it is for you. Who's with me? It's your structure. So I'm going to talk about structures today uh, because the word intention uh, isn't spelt like this, and this is no way uh, correct, but I like to break it down and write it. I'll write it into you guys now, is that it's in tension. Intention means you're, you have an intention. Does that make sense? You're in tension with something. And so I like to use the word like that. It's, it's nice. I don't know how it worked out. But when you have an intention, your intention with something, and we all know that because you're in this course, is that tension is going to seek resolution. So we do this once to come together. Okay. Now, the challenge is, is a lot of us don't actually know what we're in tension with. So there's a really good book. And if you haven't read The Path of Least Resistance by Robert Fritz, you should. It's phenomenal. I read it in 2009. Blew me away. A lot of the stuff I teach comes from that, especially around structure of results. And so there's a part, a part of the tension that we have in life is what's called psychological tension. Write that in. Someone write that in for me. Psychological tension. So we have psychological tension. And then the other kind of tension is creative tension. All right. So, so let me explain. I explained this last week. Creative tension is when you create something just because you love. Psychological tension is different. Thanks, Maureen. Psychological tension is when you have a tension around one of the six sabotage patterns. OK, so type these in for me, someone or, or a couple of you. The first one is I'm not good enough. OK, I'm not good enough. So some of us have a psychological tension is, is I'm not good enough. That's the tension. So what we're going to do is is here I am, I'm not good enough, I want to be good enough. And so we're going to do things towards wanting to be good enough, 
Okay, so the psychological tensions are not good enough. The second one is I don't belong. So I don't belong. And the tension is I want to belong. The next one is I'm unworthy. So I'm unworthy. I want to be worthy. So that's the tension we've set up. Yes. The next one is I'm not I'm not capable. So I'm not capable. So I need to I need to become capable. Then uh, the next one is uh, I'm insignificant. So I'm insignificant. So I need to do things to be significant. Um, and the last one is uh, I'm imperfect and I need to be perfect. I'm imperfect. I need to be perfect. It's a need. So if you think about these, they, you can see that the psychological tension playing out. So somebody who's I'm not good enough is looking for ways to prove that they're good enough. So that's what they're up to. OK, so they're going to search out achievements and relationships or whatever they've decided will prove to the world that they're good enough in a never ending search of trying to prove they're good enough. But I don't belong people. They don't think they belong. So they're always going to find ways to belong. Does this make sense? Or uh, I'm unworthy. The, the I'm unworthy is always going to be looking. How do I how do I find that I'm worthy? How, I've got to find ways to be worthy. I've got to be worthy. Looking for worthy. How do I how do I get validation that I'm worthy? The not capable person who's always trying to learn more stuff because they're not actually going for what they want. They just want to be capable. So they think they're not capable. So they're looking for ways to be capable. I've got to be capable. I've got to learn more. Have more money. I've got to get more resources. The, the, and the next one is I'm insignificant. So instead of going for what they love, they're going for significance, right? So instead of just choosing, they go, well, I've got to have significance. And the last one is I need to be perfect. So they're not going for what they want. They're trying to go for, for being perfect. Thanks, Maureen. And so what happens is, is that's an underlying tension structure in a human being. And the path of least resistance says, if I'm feel that I'm not good enough and I want to be good enough, well, there's some, there's some tension and tension is going to seek resolution. Now, the problem is, is in areas in your life, that tension structure is competing against another tension structure. So I'll give you an example. How many of you want to start a business? Right? You want to start or maybe you've got a business. How many of you want to grow your business? So a lot of us want to grow or start a business or make more sales or get more clients. And so what happens is since we already have, and, and I'll use one, which one should I use? I'll use the, uh, I'll use the I'm unworthy tension structure. Okay. So that's set. Just imagine that in your mind, I'm unworthy. I want to be worthy is set. So imagine that. Can you do that? So here I am and I create another tension structure and this, this tension structure says, I want to have a successful business, okay? But I'm here at this point in life. And so every time I do something over here, and maybe it, it shows up that I, I'm learning as I'm moving towards this, what's happening to this tension structure is it's increasing. Well, I'm not worthy for it. I'm not worthy for it. So what happens is, is as you're moving towards this one, this other structure is getting tighter and pulling you in a different direction. Just let me know if you get that. It, and it, it's like what it feels like if you've ever experienced it, it feels like, and we, we might label it a block, which I say it's a block. It's like it's oscillating. So we move a little bit towards this one and then that one gets tighter. And then we go a little bit this way, then this one gets tighter. And then we move a little bit this way. Who's ever felt that oscillation where they've had this goal for so long and they just don't seem to ever have it. And there's something else that, that's there. Who's ever had that? right? I know Sarah, right? I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And so we have this and it's called an oscillating pattern because we have competing tension structures. Yeah, bouncy. we have competing tension structures. So, so what do we have to do here? Well, the, the truth is, is that if we've got a need to be perfect, right? So I'm not perfect and I have to be perfect, right? So then if anything was trying to start a business, someone says, just put a Facebook post out and don't think about it. Well, that freaks out my need to be perfect. So we move a little bit this way. No, this one comes in. I'm less than perfect and we run. We don't know why we're running. We blame the course. We blame this. We blame our skills or we have a need that I have to be capable. So instead of just going and starting it, starting a business and figuring out what to do, the I need to be capable person takes this long, this long route. And the long route looks like this, is I want to have a business and make lots of money, but I have to go learn all of this stuff and get all of this money and get all of this knowledge 
So then I can actually go for what I want, not realizing that in a business, you pretty much pay everyone else to do anything you don't know. Who thinks that that can everyone see that like that the capable one is easy to see. Right. And, and it's so obvious. It's so obvious when you see that you see, you know, there's the, I don't belong person. Okay. So that they, they want to have a business, but instead of just going for a business, they're so scared of not belonging. What they do is they try to find so many ways to have it, but they're so scared of judgment that they literally, the I don't belong person, I see them all the time. They are so scared. They'll never put out a Facebook post because if they were to increase any tension of I don't belong, like they're getting further away from one of their tensions. So they never put the post out. They never do the videos because they don't want to be judged. They don't want it to be known that they don't, they feel like they don't belong. The insignificant, can you see this? It's like, the tension takes us in this long, this long route. So I've got a couple of questions come in is one is, uh, can we be more than one? I, I, I know that I am. Uh, I know that I have different tension uh, all the time and different needs. I don't have some of these at all. Don't, don't make sense, but, um, but, but more than one does for sure. I think most people have, uh, have uh, an unworthiness tension of wanting to prove worth, wanting to be good enough, wanting to belong, yeah, wanting to be capable. And so, yeah, the other question is, how do we figure out what our underlying tension is? Write this down, everyone. Behavior, behavior is the highest form. Behavior is the highest form of information. Behavior is the highest form of information. Behavior is the highest form of information. See, how many of you are in business right now? Type it a yes. I think one, two, three... I think majority of people here are in business. And if you're in business, how many of you would like to have more clients? Who would like to have more clients if you're in business? Yeah. Okay, cool. Here's a fail-proof um, plan. Um, ask more people to buy from you. Just, just start knocking on all the doors on your street and ask if they want to buy from you. Now, some of you will go, well, I, don't, I would never do that. They're, they're, you know, they're not my target market, Chris, and they're not this and they're not that. Really saying, I don't want to be rejected. I don't want to be told off. Some of you go, well, I don't know what to say. I wouldn't know what to say, Chris. If I just picked up the phone and rung people, or on the, I would, like what? I wouldn't know what to say. You know, it's, well, no, I wouldn't. I could never do that. I could never just knock on doors because I have to be significant. And so, so, that, so see that? So Sarah, I can literally just ask you a made up scenario and I can help you to start to see some of the things that are underlying that you'd never do for reasons. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so we have this tension. Okay. We have this tension. And so the interesting thing is, is a lot of times we think we're going for what we want, but we're actually going to resolve this opposite tension. So let's, let's look at this. What is a goal that you are really, really, really keen to manifest right now? Write it down. Type it in, type it in. What's a goal? What is something you would choose to create or manifest right now? More clients. There you go. Just call everyone. <laughs> By the way, I'm not uh, advocating that as a strategy. <laughs> yeah, Sarah says, I, I definitely had a lot of I'm not worthy stuff. Okay, so, so your outcome is to record videos daily. Good. What, what is an outcome you're wanting to, wanting to do? What is an outcome, team? What is, something, what is something you would choose to create? What's a creation that you'd love to have? More money? Shouldn't be that difficult. Type one in. Let's work on one. What is one you'd like to work on today? Nice. Half a million dollars in sales this financial year. Good one. Good one. Good one. Where's everyone else at? I'm going to hit like a third of you type it. Where are you guys at? Just type in a, a, a yes or a why if you've just done it on a piece of paper so I don't stand here waiting. <laughs> Thanks, Scotty. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> it's one of the benefits of being here live, but also I don't know if you're doing it. <laughs> cool. Nice. First 10 clients. Yep. Great, great. Own course, 10,000 a month, 10,000 pound a month. Nice. Got it, Sarah. 10 clients in three months. Good job. Awesome. 
Now I want to ask, did everyone type it in? Is there anyone that didn't? I think you all did. Yeah. Which one of those tensions are you trying to resolve? How do, how do those six tensions, how do those six psychological tensions relate to that goal? How do the six tensions relate to that goal? There's no right answer. Just what pops into your brain when I ask you, how do the six tensions relate to that goal for you personally? Sarah says it's not worthy. Yeah. Significance, love it. Capable, love it. Yeah, awesome. Peter says all of them. Yeah, well, wh which one in particular really, you know, comes out with that? See, when we, when we see that there's, there's something else there, because this is how you know you've got a true creation. You just, you, just, you just love it. You just want it. It just feels like a true creation and true choice. Anything else is actually there to resolve a way that you feel incomplete. Okay? And I want you to really hear that with me, is when you truly are just choosing something, you're just choosing it because you just want it. You just want it. You just love it. That's just what you're choosing. It doesn't, it's not going to complete you. It's not going to make you any different. You, you'll be exactly the same, but you'll just have that. Anything else is actually designed for in the opposite tension. Okay. So, so someone might say, look, you know, I feel insignificant. So I'm going to create a, a business. Uh, well, you know, so about me, I'm going to, I'm going to create a speaking business and I'm going to get really, I'm going to get, be significant from it. People are going to know me. Right, that that could have been it. It wasn't. It wasn't for me. Mine was, you know, be good enough. I'm gonna prove it. Right, I'm good enough. But when you put your goal inside the psychological tension, you can never have it. Does that make sense? So, so my true example is, I I created out of a place of I want to prove that I was worthy, prove that I was good enough. And so what happened was, is I was always just chasing it. Who can experience that? I was always chasing it. I could never have it because by having it, I would have to, I would have to then accept that I was, was, you know, uh, worthy, <laughs> but that's not what my tension was up to. Hmm. Hmm. So the question you might ask yourself if this psychological tension is here and, you know, structure creates behavior more than anything else. And if we're creating out of a psychological tension rather out than out of a creative tension, well, um, yeah, right on, Peter. I'm not capable, right? Oh, that's, and that's a big compliment from you, Maya. Thank you. And it's when you understand that tension will seek resolution, and if you're what you are trying to create, if it's an, if it's actually a negative goal, not a positive creation, you will find yourself in this oscillating pattern, never able to have it. What I mean by a negative goal is a negative goal is one that you've only designed to solve a problem that you have. You're not just doing it for what you love. And one of the things that I see the most in the world is people just create, when they think they're creating a life, they're really just trying to create something that doesn't have any pain. Who's with me? They just want to try to get away. So the vision is actually negative. The vision is actually, oh, I'm, go I'm not worthy. So when I have a great business, I'll be worthy. I'm not worthy. So when I have a, an amazing job or a partner or something, that will make me worthy. If I just do this, if I look after me, if I do this right, then I'll finally belong. So who's hearing that? Yeah, who's hearing it? It's big. And so because of that negative tension, that negative structure, they can never have it because by having, by having that goal, it violates who they've always been. And so what happens is they, they end up usually having what it is that they desire, but they never can get rid of the problem in the back of their head because the problem, which was what, what was on the tension that created it. Does that make sense? So if someone is, I'm not worthy, I'm going to create a business to have worth. What happens is even if they do create the business that I'm not worthy, will still be rattling around in there, right? So we'll, they'll have to find something else to try to prove it. 
And there's this amazing story of billionaires in Australia back in the 70s. And, uh, and they, they came over to uh, Australia as, as immigrants and they built themselves up into these amazing billionaires. They escaped all sorts of things and then they end up in jail and, uh, you know, with heart attacks and um, family split apart. And they basically just ended up creating what they wanted, made all this money. But in the end, they blew it all up because the psychological tension was always there, just waiting for them. You're not good enough. You're actually not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. Just waiting for it to snap back. So if we've got a psychological tension uh, that we're trying to resolve, the structure is collapsed. Well, the structure is created because we're trying to get away from it. The structure is created because we're trying to get away from it. We're saying, you know, hey, I'm not good enough and I'm trying to be good enough. So there's the tension that I'm creating. And so that's why I'm going to move towards things that are good enough. So if that's how the structure is created, what's the antidote? Well, one of the antidotes is to stop resisting this. Stop resisting the insignificant. Stop resisting that and actually go for it. And so I'm going to take you through a process where you go for it and you go for it and you really get into it. You really, truly want it. And therefore it collapses that tension. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to get into a place that, that I love to call the wizard's gate. And it's a place that Colette told me about is where you have no desire, no resistance when you truly have it all now, which is the true place that we're creating comes from. So let me ask you out of the, the six that we wanted to talk about, which one do you want to work on uh, re reducing the amount of tension you have with it? Okay, so, so let, me, let me ask you, out of 10, out of zero to 10, 10 being max resistance, like I really, I hate that, Chris, and zero being no resistance. If, if I was to tell you that, uh, that you must desire to be that how much resistance do you have so i desire to be just not good enough i desire to don't to not belong i desire to just not be capable of anything i desire to be insignificant i desire to just be completely imperfect zero to ten how much resistance thanks peter's already put in an eight zero to ten how much resistance do you have to that statement i desire to to be that like fully five nine julie Nine. Thanks, Maureen. Thanks. And what you're doing is you're rating your level of tension here, right? And it's a personal rating. <laughs> Mary's having fun with me She's saying I need to do it perfectly. <laughs> Just choose a number. <laughs> yeah. Eight, nine, eight, 120. All right, Mary, you got the perfect thing. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to do a double bubble here, okay? And we're going to explore uh, and notice all the parts of us, the memories, beliefs, emotions that come up in this structure, okay? And the structure is part of you desires to be worthy, but then part of you can never let go of being unworthy, because that's who you've been for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Does this make sense? So there's a part of you that doesn't want to let it go. So part of you desires to be unworthy and part of you desires to prove worthy, as an example, whichever one you're working on. Does that make sense? We're going to explore this and we're going to do a double bubble. And the way that we do that is we go and explore both sides of it and then we explore both of them together. I'll put some commands in there talking to your super conscious and it's going to be interesting. All you have to do is just listen and notice what's going on and uh, we'll do that as well. So is everyone ready to go? Awesome. Yes. Well, close your eyes if you're ready and let me just get myself sorted. Got my stuff here. All right. Just close your eyes. I'm just going to get a seat. Can't do it standing up or fall over. So 
So just close your eyes and just listen to my voice and just uh, oh, take a couple of breaths. It's good to be here on a Tuesday with you guys. Mm. And in your mind, I just want you to choose. I want you to desire to be unworthy. Really go for it. And as you really, truly desire to be unworthy and just desire it, I want your super conscious to tag all the beliefs, thoughts, emotions, resistances, judgments that come up as you desire to be what you don't want to be, whichever one of the six it is for you. Desire it, want it. Like it's your goal in life to be that. And I just want your super conscious and your brain to notice all of the traumas, the, the parts, everything that's there. You can do it. Just go for it. Just want it. Just want it to your best. Notice everything that's there. Notice what stops you wanting it and then get over that and want it. Choose it. And now we'll go to the other side. We'll go to the other side. And this one's easy. I want you to choose the opposite. So instead of the, uh, I choose to be unworthy, now it's I choose to be worthy. Or I choose to be perfect instead of I choose to be. So the opposite, that's it. And just choose it, desire it. This one should be easy. And as you choose it, I want you to notice for a second, what are some of the negatives of having to be worthy? What are some of the negatives of being good enough? There's always negatives. There's always downfalls. What's the negatives of spending a life choosing to be worthy? What's the downsides of a life trying to be perfect? Just notice a few. And I want you super conscious just to tag all memories, emotions, beliefs, resistances, desires, that come into the active experience. That's it, just desire it, just choose it. And keeping your eyes closed and staying with me, just really go for it. What would it be like to be completely 100% worthy or 100% good enough or 100% whichever one you're working on? That's it. And now come into the middle and at the same time, desire both. Desire to both be worthy and unworthy or desire both to be perfect and unperfect, imperfect. Desire both at the same time. That's it, desire both at the same time to want both. And you'll notice as you desire both that neither of them matter. I want you to ask your superconscious, do you see all this? Superconscious, do you see all of this? My unconscious, my higher self, do you see all of this? Do you see this resistance, these desires, these fears? Yes. Can you just do a massive change history? Just treat all of this for more satisfaction in life. What's the truth here? And do a massive change history on all emotions, parts, memories, thoughts, um, anything that's in the active experience. And allow both to collapse into the wizard's gate. You'll feel a centering. You'll feel a peace, a presence. Just breathe into a place right now of no resistance, no desire.
of worthy and unworthy, of good enough and not good enough, of all of it. Just feel that in your heart. Just stay there for a second. Just enjoy it for five or six breaths. Just breathe in through your nose and just feel your breath for a second. Feel yourself sitting where you're sitting and just have another big breath. What's true about this? What would you love to create? What would you love to create for creation's sake? Mm. For no other reason than you just want to create it. How would it feel to have that done now? How would it feel Tell you what I want to create 50 million people through my programs. You know how it would feel? Just, it's just no words. It's gratitude. How would it feel? As you're feeling it, notice that you already have it now. You already are it. Like the seed is already the forest. Just waiting for it to manifest. You already are it. Can you feel that energy? Can you feel that centeredness? already being it. And take a couple big breaths and when you're ready, come back as a new person. I love that process and I'd love to hear in the chat box your, your feedback and your thoughts. When you think about that old resistance, when you think about what you wrote in before, when I asked you, how much do you resist um, your sabotage? Yeah, thanks, Scotty. When you, when you resist your sabotage out of 10, where are you at now? If you were to think about your resistance. Two, Sarah, that's massive. Two, saw it merging into you. Nice. Really good. Awesome, Peter. See, there's this belief that all of our thoughts will turn into reality. It's just not true. I think about some crazy things. <laughs> I'm glad they don't all turn into reality. I'm glad my 15-year-old thoughts never turned into reality. <laughs> Right on, Linda. And so, see, the, the truth is, guys, is you have it all now. See, tension will seek resolution. One of the universal laws is that structure determines how energy will flow. If there's an earthquake to a river and you change its structure, the flow has to move, yes? The... When Boston was created, it, its roads go everywhere. And that was just because what happened first was they followed the buffalo that were on the open plains. And the buffalo turned into humans walking. Humans walking turned into horses. Horses ended up getting carts. Carts turned into roads. 
And so the path of least resistance was just to follow what was already there. And what was already there <laughs> didn't make much sense. And so now there's these roads everywhere when you go to Boston, and it's crazy. And so our behavior will follow the path of least resistance. And so if we have compensating um, tension, if one part of us, yeah, like in the UK, Mayor, you know, we lived over there for two years. I know what it's like. If you, have a, if you have a structure that says, I'm not good enough and I'm trying to be good enough, and then you have another tension structure that says, uh, you know, I want to create a successful business, sometimes they can be competing. And you see this in weight loss a lot. I know, Sarah, we've got, I always get this wrong, 16 times world amateur uh, bodybuilding champion. Did I get it right, Sarah? Professional. Oh, all right, not amateur. I always get one part of it. It's quite a long spiel you have. And, and so you see a lot of this, this tension um, when it comes to uh, people when they're creating the body they desire. Most people don't say that's the kind of body that I desire or, or lifestyle that I choose. Most people, oh, my jeans don't fit so good right now. Oh, I don't really like how I looked in that photo um, at the beach. Oh, problem. Triggers, I'm not perfect or I'm insignificant or I'm not worthy. Ah, oh, there's tension there, tension. So now I need to create a resolution for that tension. Ah, you know what? The gym, that will change. And so then what happens is that starts to move just a little bit this way, right? And that moves it. But then there's no, the problem isn't there. The tension isn't there anymore because now it's here. But that sets up something else. Well, I've spent all this time at the gym. Well, they haven't been focused on something else. And so now there's tension leading them somewhere else. And they just end up always trying to solve problems. And then they get to this place where they just, they, they say these words. You ready for it? I'm just trying to keep it all together. <laughs> and just trying to keep it all together means I'm just trying to solve all of these problems all at once. <laughs> and it's like you see them and they're so tense and stressed instead of just letting it all go and then choosing, choosing what they want. It's a completely different, different world.